Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Scripture Habit. Welcome to this community, this space, where our goal is to help you develop that habit of getting into Scripture. It is a life-changing habit. That's that's what God's Word does. It's just how that works. Um, my name is Rebecca. I'm a pastor. I get to be a host here at the Scripture Habit. I say welcome. And it's an honor and a privilege to get to walk alongside you. Uh, today we are continuing in our study through the book of Psalms. There are a lot of Psalms, 150 in total. Today we are looking at Psalms 96 through Psalm 103. We won't read every single one today, but I'm hoping to point to one, a chunk of one, and then we will actually read entirely through two. Yeah. So I'm going to wait just a second for friends who join us in the live to just give me a thumbs up, say hi, let me know that everything is good. Um, should be, now that we're not remote anymore, it should be good. So let me know, friends. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pray. And we're going to get started. I see friends are starting to join in. Like Susan, good morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray. And then let's, let's dig in. God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is with us, that speaks to us and guides us, reveals to us your heart, reveals to us stuff in ourselves that needs to be brought to you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. God be with us. Amen. Amen. All right. Hi, Suzanne. Suzanne and Susan. We got them both. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead. Let me pull up the scripture. So just to remind you what our reading schedule is for this week. Today, it seems like we have a big chunk, right? Because we've got We've got a bunch of them. But that's because there are many that are relatively short. So when I go through the Psalms, let me pull this down just a little, to try to um, identify what we're going to read for the day. Here we go. When I do that, I, I look at roughly how many pages <laughs> in the Bible, and I go that way. You'll see that later in the week, there's only two days where there's only two Psalms per day, and that's because they're much longer. All right. So today, we're looking at Psalms 96 through 103. All right, here are the titles in this selection, and you can see there's eight psalms, right? First one, King of the Earth, 97, The Majestic King, 98, Praise to the King, 99, The King is Holy. You see a, you see a theme there? Yeah, and those four psalms that are uh, grouped together, absolutely. Look at Psalm 100, Be Thankful. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. Uh, we are going to look at that one today. Psalm 101, a vow of integrity. This one is a Psalm of David. The ones that I've mentioned before, they, there is no author attributed to any of those. Psalm 102, affliction in light of eternity. And then Psalm 103, the forgiving God. This is also a Psalm, it says, of David. And we're going to also look at Psalm 103 today. All right. I mentioned as we're looking through, there were four psalms in today's reading that all mentioned the king, the king, the king, the king, you know? And so the question comes up, what king are they talking about? And I think that's a reasonable thing to ask because sometimes in psalms, the king referred to as David, right? David was a king for a period when some of these psalms were written. But I want to show you in Psalm 99 an example of the king that is being spoken of here. Hi, Darlene. All right. Psalm 99 starts out this way. Verse 1. The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He's exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. He is holy. 
Verse 4, the mighty king loves justice. You have established fairness. You've administered justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Now this psalm continues on. I only grabbed this first selection here because I think it's pretty obvious who the king is that they're calling holy in this psalm. The king is God. Sorry, that was my mailman. <laughs> the king is God. And they use these like kingly royal words as they're describing him. I want you to look at it again. They use the word enthroned, right? What does that mean? He's enthroned between the cherubim. It means he's placed on the throne in the position of honor. And cherubim were these like heavenly beings, right? So he's enthroned. It says, um, do you see the words that repeat? Do you see those there? Where are they repeating? The end of verse three and the end of verse five. I love when we read Psalms and we see phrases repeat. Because to me, whether it's breaks where it says Selah or there's like words or phrases that refrain, like in this case when it says he is holy, da 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 he is holy. Because I just picture, I just picture in those spaces the people joining together with one unified theme that repeats over and over and over. He is holy. And the psalm, Psalm 99, is called The King is Holy, right? So I just picture. I think that's why sometimes I, I love being a part of a service where, um, and, and I, I believe that the Catholic Church, honestly, that they're really good at this. They're not the only one. The, I've been in United Methodist Church services where they, they sometimes carry the same format where um, the leader says something, describes the nature of God, or reads a scripture, or says a prayer, and then everyone else joins in in the same phrase that they repeat together in unison. Yeah, I picture that with this. Yeah. So this is Psalm 99, but I want us to actually spend the majority of our time in Psalm 100 and 103. Right here on the screen, on the slide, five verses. This is the entirety of Psalm 100. Let's read it together. Let the whole earth shout triumphantly to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. I might be operating on a little bit of an assumption when I say, I bet you recognize some verses or phrases in that very short selection, right? Enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. For the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever, right? Um, I've seen this psalm in today's churches used as a call to worship. It's saying, hey, Let's worship the Lord. Let's give thanks for who he is and what he's done. He's good. He's worthy of praise, right? Look at the, oh, sorry. Let me look at this again. Let the whole earth shout triumphantly to the Lord. Did you notice the word shout? Come on. <laughs> Did you notice the word shout, y'all? Because most people don't. Can we just say that? Most people, when they worship God, they're reserved. But you know, the Bible does tell us to shout. This isn't the only passage that talks about worshiping God and acknowledging him with a shout. You know, there's uh, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise, right? Shout 
triumphantly to the Lord. When's the last time you shouted? Now I get it really quick. I, I know when it comes to worship, people are very quick to say, ah, that's not me. I'm not a shouter. You know, there's some people that's just like, they're, they're good at it. They're comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with it. The challenge that I would put back to you, like I get it. I'm not a shouter either. Like that's not my natural personality. But do you know what worship is not about? Worship is not about us. It's not about our comfort at all. Did you, did you know that? Worship is about giving the honor and glory that God is worthy to receive. And if it means that we shout with all of our passion, with all of our voice, we're just trying to pour it all out to him. I believe that our heart, our heart is pouring out worship. Susan, Suzanne, when I was very young, this was the first psalm I had to memorize. It's a great one. Back when kids went to church twice a week from elementary school, I still have it memorized. I love it. I love it. Susan says this, I shout a lot to rebuke Satan from my family, electronics, and any aspect of my life. You know, I, I'm, I'm guessing you've heard the same thing said. But it just, it strikes me every time I hear it. And that is, there are other things in life that we seem to have no problem just pouring out passion and even shouting. For example, sports teams, our favorite, you know, um, musical group if you're in a concert or um, cheering on your kids, you know, like we have these other spaces where we feel it is acceptable. It is okay. And yet, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, we back off, we shy away from pouring out the same amount of passion to God. Maybe we think, oh, well, church isn't the place to, you know, be loud or, you know, unreserved or something. I don't know. But the question I'd say is, who's made that rule? Because scripture, scripture does tell us that God is worthy of a shout. That we can, we should shout triumphantly as we give thankfulness to God, as we acknowledge his greatness. You know, do you feel that stirring up in you? Like, listen, I'm, I'm not saying like uh, disrupt everything. I'm not, I'm not saying like in the middle of a prayer, then you know, like you just go, ah. But there's a time and a place and you should release a shout. And as you do it, whether you're by yourself, like in the woods or something, let it be a shout of praise. You know, maybe no one else is in the house with you, but you decide I'm going to go to a place and I'm going to pray to the Lord and I'm going to begin to list off his greatness. And Lord, help me give you a worthy shout. Help me give you the acknowledgement that you are worthy of every day. Yeah. All right. This is Psalm 100. And the reason for the shout is in verse five, right? Why? As if being his is not enough, right? Like I love verse three. He made us and we're his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. And then they say, hey, with the way we enter the gate to the court, to the presence of the Lord is with thanksgiving and praise, blessing his name. But then at the end of the day, verse five sums it up. Why do we praise him? Because he's good. Because he's faithful in his love toward us toward all generations. Amen. Let's move to Psalm 103. I'm going to read Psalm 103. We're going to read through it together. And my, my belief is that you're probably going to recognize this psalm. If, if you have been in a church setting for any period, you'll probably recommend, recommend, recognize, there we go, words or phrases from this psalm, but I want us to read it together. Can we do that? If you are in a space where you can say it aloud with me, would you do that? There's something special about speaking aloud the word of God into our space. Let's do it. Psalm 103, the forgiving God, verse one. My soul 
Bless the Lord. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. My soul, bless the Lord and do not forget all his benefits. He forgives all your iniquity. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with faithful love and compassion. He satisfies you with good things. Your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord executes acts of righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He revealed his way to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in faithful love. He will not always accuse us or be angry forever. He has not dealt with us as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows what we are made of, remembering that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He blooms like a flower of the field. When the wind passes over it, it vanishes, and its place is no longer known. But from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is toward those who fear him, and his righteousness toward the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant, who remember to observe his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all his angels of great strength who do his word, obedient to his command. Bless the Lord, all his armies, his servants who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works. In all the places where he rules, my soul, bless the Lord. I'm going to bring us back to verse 1. I want to know. So I want to take it slide by slide, which is really section by section in this psalm. And, and as we go to each section, as we're reflecting and kind of meditating on this psalm to just wrap up our time together, I want to ask you the question, what phrase sticks out to you? Or is there a verse that you recognize or it captures your attention? And can you put that in the comments? Can you do that? I want us to process together, all right? One through five. I love how this opens up. And, and honestly, there's a pastor in my mind. Whenever, whenever I read Psalm 103, my heart hears the voice of Pastor Carlton, who loved this psalm and read it often in times of worship. Um, Bless the Lord, O my soul, right? That's a different translation. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Do not forget all his benefits. That phrase right there, as we were reading it this morning, that phrase is what caught me. Often I look at, you know, the all there. He, um, he forgives all your iniquity. He heals all your diseases. That's usually what sticks out because I, I just marvel at that. But today it was do not forget all his benefits. For where I am right now, I've been challenged by the Holy Spirit. Um, to what extent do I really keep my heart and life open to the Lord to be transformed, to be challenged, um, to be changed? Because I think there's a lot of things that, that I, because of the heaviness of life, I just accept. And... I'm being challenged that God does not give up on me so easily. You know, there are things that I 
you know, I'm, I'm not proud of about myself or things that I don't like about myself or challenges that I have. And, and sometimes I, I accept them and I don't like them. And I forget that the Holy Spirit has all of these benefits that he brings into our life when we yield to him. Things like God continues to give us direction, discernment, and wisdom as we listen to him, right? And the curse of sin and shame has been broken over us. You and I are not bound to sin anymore. And yet, sometimes I forget that benefit. And um, sometimes we can live in habits of, you know, patterns of behaviors that aren't great because it's what we've known and it's what we've done. And I don't know, I just feel like I've forgotten his benefit. I've forgotten the power of the Holy Spirit in that space. I've given up on myself when God hasn't given up on me and my ability to change and be transformed through the power of his Holy Spirit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, that, that's a phrase that gets me. Don't forget all his benefits. Usually when people think of that, they're thinking of provision and protection and... Um, refuge and and yes yes what <laughs> so many benefits benefits of the lord that are very diverse right that we forget those things when we call on him he'll answer you right but for me today i'm sitting there thinking of the benefit of the holy spirit that has the power to change that has the power no matter how old we get to break the curse of sin and death and give us the the power to live a different life yeah I also love verse five. He satisfies you with good things. That word satisfies. My girls and I have, talk, have talked a lot about what it means to be satisfied. Um, maybe because like in, in school, right now, I, don't, I don't know what it is with, with kids in school right now. They talk about, um, is it called ASMR? Like these, you know, fidgets and whatever. And I'll never forget the first day that Noel said, ooh, that's satisfying. And I was like, wow, that's a really big word for a, you know, five-year-old kid, six-year-old kid at the time. She's like, that's really satisfying. I like that. I like seeing that or experiencing that. But the satisfying of our soul means that this longing or this emptiness or this thing that hasn't, it's felt like it's, there's something missing or something needed. God satisfies our soul with good things. Yeah. He satisfies you with good things. Amen. Let's keep going. Verses 6 through 11. You probably recognize verse 8. Some translation. The translation that I had it memorized uh, was, The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love. This, uh, this translation is the Christian standard. And it kind of flips those two words. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love. I appreciate how verse six points to him um, advocating for the oppressed, right? With executing acts of righteousness and justice. Verse seven points about how God reveals himself, like he's not hidden from, from Moses. And before, even from Abraham, God has been in this, process of revealing the fullness of himself to his creation that he loves right and then verse 9 and 10 this awareness that our sin deserves a lot worse and none of us are without sin right what we deserve as a result of our sin the consequences that we deserve in addition to the uh, impact on our eternity as a result of sin. God delivers us from that. He invites us to walk a different path. Yeah. Okay, as we were reading this, I love the descriptor. He's talking about how, how high, how great 
the distance from east to west, like this great expanse of God's love, his compassion, right? And he mentions compassion on his children, compassion on those who fear him in verse 13. And it mentions God as a father. Ooh, I think that's a great, a great verse. I'm going to write this down. We have a scripture thing on our wall in the sanctuary. And it, I've been sitting there thinking, ooh, which verse do I want to put up for Father's Day? And I just found it. <laughs> I just found it. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Amen. I wondered if this verse, verse 17, stuck out to anyone this morning. It says, from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is toward those who fear him and his righteousness toward the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant, who remember his precepts. Did you know have you considered that your faith and obedience to God, your willingness to serve and submit to him all the days of your life will be a benefit and blessing to your future generations, even your grandchildren? Thank you, Lord. Right? Susan, I love that you caught that. Yeah. To the grandchildren of those who keep the covenant. Look at that again. Verse 17 and 18. From eternity to eternity, this is, this is not a one and done experience that God offers, right? It's not, oh, this was a gift or a promise to Moses back then. No, this is saying this is the nature of God, his love that he has, right? Part of him, from eternity to eternity, the Lord's faithful love is toward those who fear him and his righteousness toward the grandchildren of those who keep his covenant, who remember to observe his precepts. I think we could we could really break that out and study it. For example, um, what is the righteousness that is being shared to the grandchildren? And the grandchildren of who? Of those who keep his covenant, people who remember to observe his precepts. It's worth pointing out that you and I do not live under the old covenant. You and I live under the new covenant. We are not bound under the covenant of the law, which we could never fulfill. You and I are under the law of grace that was ushered in through Jesus, through the love and the mercy and the forgiveness of God, where Jesus stood in our place and became our, our atoning sacrifice. Now you and I get to live a different life and we get to experience benefits that are beyond what we deserve. I see the heart of the heart that you have for your grandkids, guys, I see it. The minute that word pops up, it's a hot word because I know that you care. You're worried about grandkids. You're worried, are they going to know and love the Lord? Are they going to serve him? Are they going to get caught up in Lord knows what? Mm. Oh, I love this, Judy. My great-grandfather's Christian life is impacting my grandchildren. It has impacted generations. The question I would say is, why is that? Because as you're raising a family in your home, you're imparting the values and the love and the respect and the sensitivity to God, the awareness that we are a child of God, that he loves us, that his way for our life is better than us just trying to push our desires on our own, right? All those faith things being imparted become a blessing to the future generations because you're teaching them to serve and see and love and desire and submit to the Lord. Yeah. Wrapping up this psalm as we finish. The very last slide is just a call for everything to bless the Lord, whether it's in the heavens whether it's spirit, in the spiritual realm regarding like his armies and his servants, all his works in the places where he rules. Guess what, guys? We are his workmanship. That's calling us to worship as well. And then if David, if David had missed any part of it, then he speaks directly to his soul and says, Bless the Lord again, O my soul. The way he opened is the way he closes, calling his soul to choose to worship and bless the Lord. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the chance to reflect and soak in 
these hymns of praise acknowledging who you are. Help us remember. Help us reflect. Help us submit. Help us trust. Help us shout. Help us worship. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. That's it for today. Do me a favor, hit the share button. Can you do that? Can you invite someone into this habit of getting into scripture every day? Yeah. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.